Hi, Scott Wheeler here, hope you're doing well and welcome to this brand new video. This video is coming to you from the road we're currently just north of Paris. Um, we're kind of touring, we're working while we tour. Uh, so I've taken Scott Whitley bass lessons on the road. And in this video, we're gonna look at the Boss Street Cube 2 and see, is it suitable for bass? If it sounds good, it is good. This video is not gonna be uh, a, at all a kind of tech spec thing or anything like that. I've got nothing written down at the minute. Um, I bought the unit, the Street Cube 2, uh, just after watching a, a few YouTube videos actually. And I brought it, bought it primarily for practicing while we're on the road. Um, it's super lightweight. It runs off of AA batteries or you can run it off the mains. So I've got some rechargeable batteries with us and we've got solar panels to charge stuff. So um, this is the first time I've literally plugged anything into it. I don't know if it's going to work. Primarily, like I said, I bought it as a practice thing, but also if we head off to like the south of France, maybe, you know, I'll try some, um, some busking, you know, performing in the street. I know you know what busking is. <laughs> um, so let's give it a go. So I'm going to keep this like an uncut kind of video. And I'm just going to place this down on my tripod, all right? And let's see if we can just get what I need to into shot. So if we do that, all right? So like I say, this is a completely uncut video. Uh, this is really genuine. Never even, well, I've switched the unit on just to see if it worked, but I've never done anything. What I'm going to do is just get this camera recording uh, the panel so that as I change settings you will be able to see what's going on let's yeah, that's recording yeah right so I've got a few bases with me um the primarily I brought this guy for traveling but I've still still got the um still got an SWB1 with me which is a, a prototype for the um the UK made ones uh <laughs> which I was supposed to hand back because of the weight. I only wanted to bring a tiny thing, um, but I still got it. So long story. But for the purposes of just to keep it in the spirit of all this travel gear, I'm going to try it with this. OK, so this is a traveler base out of interest. If you've never heard of them, very cool thing. So I'm just going to plug this in. Like I say, never used this unit in my life. I'm just going to replace this mic. Sorry for the noise. Perhaps that'll work better on there. We'll see. All right. So I'm going to switch it on. We've got power. Right. So I've got the bass plugged in. It's turned on. Um, I'm really conscious of this mic. Sorry for the fact that I'm going to place it there. Let's see if we get any sound. Okay. Now it's got two channels, um, as you'll see on the video. Let's see if that's got it in shot. Right. It's got um, at least two channels. We've got... Um, a mic stroke instrument channel here all right which i think is really well suited for um for vocals singing etc because it's got a harmony or harmonizer um and then we've got the the it's more of a guitar dedicated input but you can use it as another mic input um because it's, when i say guitar it's got um i think the impedance is more suited to it plus we've got different amp types and stuff, which will suit my kind of piccolo bass stuff really well. It's also, uh, it's got a, an auxiliary in and it's got an optional Bluetooth adapter. So you can actually kind of get your phone and play backing tracks through it and stuff, which I've got as well. It wasn't very expensive. So that's on the back of the unit there. You can just see the blue light um, shining through. It's got, um, it's got a looper built into it, which is incredible. Again, I bought, sorry, brought uh, foot switches to be able to operate all this stuff, but I don't know what I'm doing with it yet. I've only just plugged it in. I've not got the manual out or anything. So this is a really genuine first go. So to try it out at first, I'm into the mic stroke instrument input in this channel. I've set this mic instrument switch to instrument. Let's put the EQ in the middle. Okay, I've got a feeling it's kind of digital EQ, so it'll remember where it was last time. Not sure of that. Reverb at nothing, harmonizer off, volume. Right, we got sound. 
I see. Crikey, it's it's pretty it's pretty loud. I'm gonna turn that down a bit. Don't want to wake all the campers up. That sounds ace. Sounds really good. What do you think, Jan? Does it sound good? Sounds great. Mrs. Whitley's over there. She's uh, What are you doing, Jan? I'm using my portable non-electric washing machine and washing our clothes. She's washing our clothes in an eco-friendly style. How about that? So this bass, by the way, it's very P bass kind of um, in, in its vibe and sound. You know, you can see it's got a little split single coil thing. Um, and that just sounds really good. This is out in the open on a field. There's no place for the, the sound to kind of bounce back or anything like that. So it's the worst possible uh, case in a lot of ways. You know, there's nothing to kind of enhance the bottom end. It's on soil. Very, very cool. Um, it's got, I believe, a tuner, it's got a tuner built in, right? Check this out. So I've got the tuner pressed. It's muted as well. Now, whether you can change that setting, I mean, that's what I want it to do, if I'm honest. So let's see, I'm a little flat. I wish my stomach was. All right, still a little flat. Still a little flat. In joke, not far enough back. <laughs> Nah, little sharp, gone too far. Right, more or less, I'm going to tune with the harmonic, see if that works better. 12 fret harmonic sometimes can be a little easier for a tuner to pick up. Obviously, we've not got a lot to play with in terms of the meter in here, so... Am I tuning the right string? Am I tuning the right string? Yes, I am. Okay, tiny bit more. Don't want to use the full video up tuning. Let's go to the D. Come back to that. I'm still doing this 12 fret business. There. Right, it's good to know it's actually working. Okay, so I'm going to go where it settles down because you always get a slight bump in pitch when you first pluck the note. All right. Being a bit more aggressive with my tuning here now. I'm going to open the E. Just a little flat still. A little flat. I'm going to go with that. I always tune the E, especially on short scales. Slightly flat anyway, so that G is still flat. Okay, there you go. That'll do. Right, tuner, great. Okay. So let's have a look at the EQ section. Um, very simple, bass, mid and treble. And by the way, um, the, you know, the first input, the one that's more like a PA, for me is more suited to the sounds that I get. I like the plugging in straight into a desk. So it's more of that kind of tone. Uh, let's, let's try bumping the mids a little bit. So you really get that growl, you know. Uh, let me try pulling the mids. Let's see what happens. So it's a lot smoother when you do that, right? I'll take them all the way out. Yeah, really cool. Let's try that. See if I boost the highs a little bit, maybe the lows with all that mid scoots out um very very cool um and you could go the other way you could kind of like take some of the highs away bring those mids back Maybe take the lows down a bit. Let's do a re really mid bias kind of thing, right? Mm -hmm. 
I love it. It sounds really good. And I'm not pushing the thing volume wise, I've got to be honest, right? Um, but let's just say when I first plugged it in, it was almost like embarrassingly loud here on the campsite. And it's not a quiet site. Um, you know, there's a main road nearby and there's people been singing and all kinds of stuff. So really cool. Let's uh, check out the reverb. Not a lot of bass players need reverb generally or use it much, but let's see what happens. I've just dialed it in randomly. Okay. Um, let me go a bit higher. That's nice. Very cool. Go all the way. Kind of extreme. That'd be kind of cool for like swells. You know, I've done a video on uh, bass swells. Very, very nice stuff. Yeah, loving it. Uh, we're still recording there. Are we still recording? Yes, we are. Right. I wasn't asking you, by the way. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to turn the reverb all the way off. And the only other thing... Ah, wait a minute. We've got effects like chorus and delay. But I'm assuming they are particular to the second channel. Let me just try dialing, say, like a delay all the way in. Yeah. Okay. So the only other thing we've got available in this channel is harmony so let, let me just randomly bring that up <laughs> love it okay so we've got um let me see so green is auto and red is set now you can actually set a lot of these parameters on your phone using an app, which I downloaded this morning, but haven't done anything with yet, except connect it. Um, so I'm, I'm not really gonna go into that because I don't obviously know, you know, I don't know how to use it. That will be another video. So let me just kind of move this around. Let's see what happens. So I don't know how it would have I, I, I don't know if the auto thing kind of listens to the track you might be playing along with, you know, if you use a backing track. Uh, but what I'm hearing sounds really cool. Let's put in a major third on. Um, and I think you can choose... Ah, oh, right, okay, so that's doing a doubling thing. That's well good. Yeah, you hear that? It's kind of, kind of like double tracking it. What was that? So it's really cool. It's a really cool sort of double tracking kind of sound. Um, yeah, very cool. So let me go and plug in to the second channel. Here we go. And that is this input here. All right. So I'm now into um, this channel, All right? So if I play, there's nothing. Um, now we've got a, right, we've got it. Right, we've got a pre and post gain type thing. So if most guitar players will know what this is about, uh, a lot of, not a lot of bass amps, well, yeah, 
Not every bass amp has this going on. And what's going on is gain in a guitar amp kind of setting is how much kind of drive, how driven um, is the input side of things. And then volume here, that'll be what's called pulse gain. That's the output. So I'm just going to kind of be conservative with gain because I don't want distortion right now. I've got this set to amp type instrument, which I assume is, is, the, is the same as this. It's just giving me a kind of flat response type thing. And that's what I'm hearing, okay? So at the minute, I'm essentially doing what I was with this channel, but over here. So that now gives me access to these guys. So let's, reverb should be the same. Over here, we've got chorus, which happens all the way up to about 12 o'clock, and then you've got delay, all right? So, let's kind of dial in some chorus. That's really nice. Sounds great. Let's add some reverb to that. Uh, and I'll tell you what, let's dial in some real highs, take some of the mids away, let's try some tapping stuff, which is not generally, it's, you know, something like a P bass kind of tone is, is known for. sound beautiful sound so let's kind of turn well not kind of actually turn the reverb off and uh, let's check out the delay stuff right i keep meaning to do some videos on delay <laughs> for bass right let's see what we've got okay so i'm not sure whether if we speed this up um it'll just change the amount of repeats if we turn this up right so that's just kind of giving us more or less repeats, right? All right, if I turn it up a little more, let me just turn the overall volume down. It's pretty loud here, actually. And all the way up. Yeah, so you're getting more repeats, okay? Now, somewhere, I imagine, we can, what you call, tap the tempo of the delay, although I'm not seeing it. So just give me one second. I might have to come back to you on that one. Uh, there's got to be one somewhere, right? Two seconds. Um, unless I'm missing something. Da -da 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 -da. I don't see it. Should be, though. Should be a, somewhere, I, I assume. If... Now, whether that's only doable that may only be doable through the app. So I'll have to look into that. But like I say, this is really genuine. I've never used, never even switched the thing, sorry, never even plugged into it before. So let's go with that um, delay that we've got preset there. Sorry, wrong control. Um, yeah, there we go. And the reason um, delay is, is, is a lot of fun on bass is it can kind of, it's a great timing. Um, tool. You know, it's great for um, exercising your timing. So you can either kind of play like straight in time with that, you know, uh, kind of thing or you can you can use it for um 
like players like The Edge, you know, from U2, uh, and the guys from Big Country, you know, Stuart and Bruce, used to do this a lot. Uh, they use like a dotted delay, so it's kind of doing triplets, right? Let me just take a drink, it's so hot here. Um, it's, it's like magic, and not a lot of bass players get into this. It's, it's, it's probably why I find it so amazing. One sec. So I'm going to have to work back um, to try and decipher uh, what tempo I need to play at. Bear with me. Let me just give it a go. So that wants to be one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. So do you recognize that kind of sound? If, if I could speed that tempo up to kind of um, a little faster. All you play is bum, 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 bum. I'm just playing like eighth notes, I think it is. You know, dun, 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 boom, three, four, one, and two, and, uh. and this is giving me twice that, right? Uh, if I could turn the tempo up, which I will be able to with the amp, and I'll come back in another video to show you how to do this. Um, then you can be playing bum 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 and what comes out is digga 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 it's just incredible but it's it's doing it in such a way that it sounds so musical right check it out um so so if i turn that echo or delay off all i'm playing is right put it back on Try some slap with that. I don't think I've done that before. Too. Love it. So yeah, <laughs> maybe I digressed a bit there. Um, so that's your delay. Then we can choose different uh, different amp models. Now we've got acoustic guitar ones, which I'm not particularly interested in for this because it's not an acoustic instrument. We've got electric guitar models over here. We've got clean. Now what this is going to do is kind of well, let me turn the volume down and the gain up. Right, so what we've got. Bit of reverb. It's, it's, to be honest, it may well be actually, uh, you know, like a, a bass model app, but it is a very... You know, it's a very nice, clean sort of sound. I like that. Um, let's go into crunch, all right, there you go, you're getting a bit of actual drive now, all right, let's try that. Love it, um, and what you could do is you can increase the gain here, right, I'll max it out and then take the volume down. So remember this is pre-gain or, pre, you know, pre, um, it's before this, all right? And the more you boost that, the more you drive the circuit. This is how loud, it's like a master volume, right? Cool. Or you could keep it nice and subtle 
uh, take the volume. So it only drives when you dig in, right? So you could be like playing blues, for example. Uh, you know, so only when you really dig in does it drive. Um, let's try lead. Okay. Now this is gonna. I know. I know what it's saying. You know, lead. It's gonna be like a very driven. You know, it's, the drive's already gone up, and I'm not changing anything here. So if I turn the volume down, turn the gain pretty high. Oh, let's let's go for it. <laughs> let's go nuts. Well, he says awesome. You know, so that's giving you, uh, I don't, you know, if you don't use a lot of drive, the more you use, it kind of compresses everything. You know, it gives you this really crazy sustain, you know. So, um, yeah, again, that could be a lot of fun for um, swells, although it's going to come in very early, isn't it? Hang on. Just effect. Stuff like that. Now, next up, we've got. By the way, I'm only skimming through these. You, you, you sort of, you can get anywhere in between with the gain control uh, and by messing with the EQ and stuff like that. You know, um, you get a lot of flexibility out of that. If we go to acoustic sim. This does interest me. This does. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. So that's kind of, it's what it is. If you've never used one, a lot of, again, a lot of guitar players use this, um, particularly live. So it's not um, a, a simulation, simulated, you know, acoustic bass, as in like an upright. It's it's more like an, um, an you know, like an acoustic bass, this kind. You know what I mean? <laughs> you always get that hiss with these things. But it's cool, you know. It's it could be a useful thing. Add a bit of reverb to that, you know. Uh, It's a cool sound. So overall, really, really, really impressed with that. Um, it'd be a, a great tool for practicing. You could take it in the garden. It doubles as an amazing Bluetooth speaker, um, you know, because you've got, that's the one thing I did. I tried it as a Bluetooth speaker earlier just to see if that um, would work and to make sure it was making noise. Um, and you, so you could use that for playing backing tracks as well. You know, if you want to kind of um, perform with this thing, it's certainly, way way loud enough for practice um playing bass through it is going to be more of a challenge for it than than playing a guitar through it you know but it, it's it's doing it it's doing it really well and like i say it runs off of eight double a batteries um i've gone for rechargeable ones and uh yeah it, fantastic little unit so that's it the boss streets cube 2 as i said before this is not a tech and spec kind of video it's just literally um an honest first time plugging into the thing without knowing anything about how to use it uh, and seeing what it did and i hope you were as impressed with it as i am okay guys thanks for watching and see you in the next video cheers <laughs>